Is it Wiggins coming to life? Is it Jordan Poole coming to life defensively or offensively or in some capacity at all? I, I, I mean, I, Jordan Poole, I have no hope for him. Um, he, I, he's not a good basketball player, and at this point he's <laughs> getting benched in the second half for good reason. Hmm. Um, Cena. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I saw your face, and I was like, mm. uh, I didn't like those comments. Like, while I would have been interested to hear what Kevin O'Connor was going mm-hmm. to say about what the Warriors can try to do in this series, hold up, full stop, Jordan Poole is not a good basketball player? Um, I have a problem with that statement um, for two reasons. One, just like, mm. who are you to, 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 to call this, to say this man is not a good basketball player? Like, who are you? Like, what level of basketball have you played? Have you done to, like, do you know what it takes to get to the NBA? So it's just the audacity in the statement. But then the second that, thing Matt. is, look at what he's done. Like, he didn't get the contract that Thank he got you. for no reason, you know? Look, at, look mm-hmm. at these numbers that he's putting up. Coming off the bench, I might add, okay? Um, yeah. Close to 20 points. 20 points this year. I mean, what are we doing? What are we doing here? Girl, okay. Let's get into it, okay? (laughs) Because the thing about this comment is, all right, Kevin O'Connor, go in a room with Bob Meyer and tell him that. Because Bob Meyer is the person, Bob Myers is the person that made that contract happen. So you telling me that Bob Myers, the person that has been able to do what he's been able to do, with the Golden State Warriors and their and their dynastic run, that he can't assess good basketball players, go in the room with his entire team and you tell them that. Go in the room with Joe Lacob and, and, and Peter Guber. You go in the room and you tell them that. Go in the room with Steve Kerr, right? Okay, even if you don't want to go in that room, because you probably don't, because <laughs> they're probably going to tell you about yourself. And they're probably going to tell you what, they're probably going to tell you what Clay Thompson told the media the other day. It's kind of hard to hear what a good shot or a bad shot or what a good basketball player is or a bad basketball player is from someone who's never played the game. Because I don't know that Kevin O'Connor has ever played in the NBA. Silence. So that being said, I'm very curious as to what you would say to all the teams that he has scored 20 or more points on. Right? Yeah. Let's go talk to them. Let's go talk to Toronto, who he put 43 points on in December. Yeah. Right? Let's go talk to uh, Portland, where he's dropped 41 and 38. Exactly. I'm sure you want to talk to that whole roster that he's not a good basketball player? I just, I think there's sometimes, especially with the media, it's so fascinating some of the, like, crazy takes that can happen from people who have never played the game and people who write off players so quickly. Poole, like Jordan Poole said this uh, a few weeks right before the playoffs started. He was like, I think he had scored, I don't know, 30-something points. Right. Went off again. Pool yep. party went off again. And he told NBC Sports Bay Area, he's like, all right, so y'all see what I can do, right? Right. So let's put some respect on my name. Let's stop playing around and not acting like we don't know what I'm capable of. And yeah. it's true. Sure, Jordan Poole has had some streaky games. He has had some games where he's had a lot of turnovers. He's had some games where he hasn't shot well. He's had some games where his shot selection was questionable. But to say he's not a good basketball player, I mean, there's so many people in front with that same with that comment. I'm sorry. No, it doesn't sit well with me. And 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 can we first remember that Jordan Poole is one not yet even making the money that everyone is complaining about. So that begins (laughs) next year. So he's only making a few million dollars and he's giving you Mm -hmm. the amount 20 points he's averaging 20 points okay um last year led the league um in free throws right percentage okay beat his Um, teammate Steph (laughs) was in the conversation for six man of the year but maybe because of the games and he was in and out of the starting lineup he couldn't really you know meet the criteria so in one season he's gone from that to a good basketball player. I didn't hear anyone calling his contract crazy this summer when he got nope. it, right? And so nope. I just, 
you know, this reminds me of the whole Andrew Wiggins thing, you know, and I remember because um, I think Nick Wright got on TV and said, Andrew Wiggins is not a good basketball player. And Matt Barnes was in his ass. Like he was like on Twitter, like, <laughs> how right. are you going to say a dude? <laughs> like people think it's really easy to just get 20 in the NBA. Yeah. Do you see what Andrew right. Wiggins just came back and did after not being there for, for m- months? Listen, Over I mean, 26 games. Listen. 26 Zena, games missed. Yeah. I, I I don't work out for like, you know, two weeks and I'm and I'm dying. <laughs> right. You know right. what I'm saying? So it's just like for you to take these like th- th- and listen, because especially if you follow me on Twitter, y'all know I be talking all kinds of ish. Right. But Say it. when I'm saying things about players, it's like because I don't like them. It's because of competition. So I'm just like, oh, they're this, they're that. I name call. And some people may not like that, but I'm not doing it. I'm doing it in the spirit of like a fan. Like, I don't like mm-hmm, this player. Mm-hmm. I don't like this. Mm-hmm. Like, everyone knows I'm not the biggest Chris Paul fan, not the biggest Kevin Durant fan, but I would never fix my mouth to say Chris Paul isn't a great, amazing player and one of the best point guards of all time. Like, what are yeah. we doing? So I just, I thought it was like ridiculous. And it really bugged me. It really irked me mm. when I saw mm-hmm. that he said this. So I just want to touch on it real quick. We, you know. Oh, 1,000%. And this is the perfect setup for what we're going to talk about next, which is who can say these things, <laughs> a.k.a. the other players within the league. And it was really cool to see uh, The Athletic actually did a poll asking these types of questions. Who's the best player? Who's the most underrated? Who's the most overrated? Who's the league's MVP? Who's the best player of all time? And it was really interesting to get these questions answered by the league's players, because those are the people that are, you know, qualified to say that. But the interesting one that that hit me was uh, most overrated. Yeah. Ray Young, that's yeah. the most individual. There was some others that had about 31% within the other categories. So, uh, but Trey Young got 14% of the vote as most overrated. Now, it's interesting that this headline comes out right now because we know Trey Young's struggling right now, right? Uh, his, actually, he's been struggling his last two playoff appearances. He's just not putting up the numbers that we're seeing in the regular season. But it was fascinating because I'm now thinking, like, what does overrated mean? What constitute o- overrate, like right. being overrated? Is it is it the media attention? Is it the uh, amount of... Uh, a power that you get within a program, right? Within an organization to build around you. Cause you know, that usually sometimes is the thing where a star player gets to dictate who your next head coach is or who gets to be brought around you. What constitutes overrated in the minds of the athletes? I'm very, very curious. Uh, is it Jersey sa- sales, right? Is it the contract size? And so I, seeing that was kind of like, hmm. I mean, I know he's a villain for particularly in New York. I know that. But I was I was a little surprised to see that he was uh, voted or he was the most had double the most amount of uh, individual votes. Um, so I don't know. What do you think is overrated, Matt? I mean, listen, I've I've done my fair share of uh, criticizing of Trey Young. Not <laughs> sure. not not an extreme, but I usually get sort of triggered and annoyed when he's brought up in conversations with Stephen Curry. So usually. Sure, my my sure. reactions are about just dispelling that myth and why he's not in that category of player. Not yet. We don't know what he can yeah. be. Um, look, Trey, he, Trey is still, to me, also relatively young in his career. Yes, he's gone to mm. the playoffs. He's not like, you know, a young, young player, but he's still younger sure. in his career tra- trajectory. And there's still yeah. room for him to evolve and improve his game. I think there's some things yeah. he probably does need to change. Think about how much he holds onto the ball, maybe change his shot selection with respect to the three, because it's not that he shouldn't shoot them, but maybe the number and the amount he's shooting may be mm-hmm. a little mm-hmm. too many, right? And so those are things over time he has to refine his game, but we know that he's an ultra talented player. We know that he's an incredible passer. Um, and it just may be one of those years. Players have down years. I mean, look, Steph went through the worst shooting slump of his career last season, and yeah. he's a seasoned vet. So, I mean, I found it funny. It was good for Twitter fodder. Oh, they think yeah. Trey Young is overrated. But I do always just find it curious to see what the players think. The one other thing to me from that, which was really notable, yeah. was um, mm. MV- Embiid was their MVP. And only notable because 52%. I— 52%. Th- 
Yes, I think outside yes. of like his teammates, meaning Jokic's teammates, for the most part, there might be like a few outliers, but all the players that I've seen all seem to be with Embiid being the, mm -hmm. you know, MVP. And I just think it's notable that the from the player's perspective, you know, that's right. that's what they're saying. So um, yeah. I like the poll. I always think those are pretty cool. I do. I love the fact that also because it's synonymous, you're getting true responses. Right. I mean, even we were just talking about the Draymond situation. You're always going to have your teammates back in public. Right. And so being able to see the true mindset of people as they're evaluating who's the most overrated, who's the most underrated, who's the MVP of the league. Uh, that's that's cool to be able to see. OK. All right. And also, it must feel good for the players. I mean, maybe not for Trey Young, but like, for example, Drew Holiday getting the most underrated, being the top voted there and, and MB being uh, voted for MVP. It must feel good to like look around and be like, all right. I'll put some respect on my name. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I'm a fan of these player polls. I hope we get mo mo get them more throughout the season. I want a half season one. I want one right before playoffs. I want one at the end. Uh, Preseason ones. I think those are the most interesting ones because they will influence how we think about players as well. Yeah, for sure. I mean, look, we were just talking about the MVP or probably soon to be MVP, uh, Joel mm. Embiid, who is in the East. But I got to tell you, right now, these playoffs in the East, Zena, for me, they are not doing anything. Like, I'm just like, <laughs> come on now. I'm um, to, sleep. <laughs> to me, I just think this still proves that the West remains, you know, supreme. Yeah. Um, the ratings even show it. The ratings are showing that, you know, like the ratings yeah. are high right now um, right, for the right. playoffs. But they support what I think you and I both think, which is like the West is just um, better. Like the ratings from yeah. have all been the West games, right? So it's mm -hmm. been Warriors Kings, which was the highest yeah. rated series, which then also just makes their decision. Oh, we're not going to go back there to Another, suspend exactly. Draymond. We're not just that's, that's crazy. Important. Yeah. But yeah. also like, you know, it's, 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 it's the Lakers series and it's also, mm -hmm. um, it's also the Sun series, right? Look at the matchups the right series, now. Yep. I mean, yeah. look at these, you know? So yeah. it is, it's it is. It's entertaining. And the thing about it is, is the West right now has more storylines yes. between these matchups, right? When you look at the Clippers versus the Suns, you think about KD and Westbrook, you think about Kawhi and his comeback. Who's the best player of all time? Kawhi or KD, or not of all time, but of right now, right? The most, that matchup. And I am just, loving all of the excitement and energy around trying to see these storylines play out on the court. Uh, you look at a De'Aaron Fox clutch player of the year, and he is showing that. I mean, in case you had any reservations around if he deserved that, he's been showing that in the last two games. And so I definitely think that right now the West is so much more, so much more entertaining. Of course. Not only from a game perspective, but because there's all these underlying storylines to it. And I mean, yeah. We won't re we won't rehash it, but it is why this whole Warriors King situation and the suspension makes it even more dramatic, makes it even more um, uh, hyped up. And let's just be real. I know the league, you know, suspended Draymond for the antics, probably more so than the actual stomp. That's right. how I feel. But those antics get them ratings. Yeah. Right. Those antics make people tune in. And guess what? They made people tune in then and they're going to definitely make them tune in on Thursday. Yeah. And so at, at some point we have to be careful around, you know, the, the, the politics of how to compose yourself as an NBA player, yes. because let's just be real. We know those, those antics are exactly what the NBA needs in terms of getting people to tune in live. Yeah. Like we said, again, Warriors, the best rated series. And look, Thursday is going to be a big deal. And without Dre also, like we are going to be tuning in for uh, the clutch player of the year. De'Aaron yeah. Fox has been great in that series. And it's going to be, you know, time for Steph Curry to step up, you know, De'Aaron Fox right. versus Steph Curry. I mean, that's what that's going to be about Thursday. The Draymond Green mm -hmm. storyline will be hanging over it. But I mean, you just got to I just got to give a shout out to Fox real quick because you know, yeah. he is a player who I've always liked. Really, really just one of my faves in the league. And yeah. so um, it's it's good. This inaugural award, he was able to win it. And I think that's pretty yep. cool. And he's been, it, he's it's continued into the postseason. And sometimes those things, though the awards players win, 
um, or the, mm -hmm. the things they do in the regular season don't carry over. But in this case, it did. So I am really looking yeah. forward to that. Look, I know we have company to get to, but one other thing that I just want to just say very quickly, I don't appreciate the NBA scheduling for these playoffs, okay? Mm. Like, um, it is just very favorable to a certain <laughs> team in LA, you know what I'm saying? Like, how is it that the Lakers have yet to play their second game? How is that possible, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, and I mean, no. I think, I think our next guest who we're about to bring on and who covers mm -hmm. the Miami Heat, um, they haven't played their second game yet either, but like they just have a large amount of time in between games. Whereas like the Suns have off like one night in between like several yes, of their games. Exactly. I mean, look at yeah. these two schedules between like the Suns and the Clippers versus the Lakers and, and, and there's the three days, three days on the left guys, 419 to 422 versus two days it's all it's every other night uh it's not until game five that the suns actually get three days uh, yeah. until their next game so it's only two days in between versus three uh a few times for the lakers and it, it's it's not even just scheduling for the for the fact of the players getting a little bit more rest but it's also just like timing i mean even yesterday there were two eastern conference games happening at the same time from yeah. a fan perspective this isn't the NCAAs where they get, no. you know, YouTube gives you the breakdown or whatever, like the two different, the four games at once. Like you have to flip back and forth. Then how late the game was on Sunday. Yes, and um, that's what Charles Barkley was upset about. But, and, and yeah. you know, they do usually do the doubling, but they don't normally put like two premier games on. And you're going to have right. Suns and Warriors within a half an hour apart on Thursday, two of the top rated series right now. I, I don't know what was being thought of for this schedule, but just not very good. <laughs> yep. So, you know what, let's yeah. get to our company. Um, cannot yes. wait to talk to her. Uh, listen, uh, NBA, get it together. Suspensions, bad schedules, get your <laughs> act together, NBA. Yes. Hey, thank you for watching Brother From Another. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, go ahead and do that now. Don't forget you can catch us three to four weekdays on PeacockTV.com and on Sirius XM Channel 85.